Grace and peace, friends. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. Uh, I'm so glad that we can be together to worship God together. Uh, as we worship today, just a few announcements I want to make you aware of. Uh, the first of which is we'll be having our congregational meeting to elect elders and deacons, an auditor, nominating committee, uh, and some updates from session following the meeting. Um, so we will, uh, as our service comes to a near end, uh, we'll begin the meeting. Um, those of you who aren't, aren't members of the church are welcome to stick around. Uh, I'll ask you now and then later uh, to, to not participate in voting. Um, but uh, nothing, nothing that we're doing is so secret uh, that uh, we need to ask everyone to leave the room. In fact, our folks who are at home who are participating through the live stream, uh, they'll, they'll be able to, um, they'll be able to at least view the congregational meeting uh, as we uh, go through that today. Uh, the next couple of announcements are regarding, yesterday was World Food Day. So in the month of October, we have been um, celebrating our partnerships with the Crop Walk uh, the last couple of Sundays. Uh, the, next, the next few Sundays, beginning today, we'll focus on our partnership with Bread for the World. Uh, we also have resumed doing... Um, third Sunday of the month, non-perishable food collections. So I, I believe I, I saw a number of bags parked near the office door there, which is awesome. So thank you for uh, beginning re or renewing that tradition so well. Um, but if you want to circle that on your calendar for future months, it will be doing that on the third Sunday each month. Uh, if you would like to make an offering today, you can do so either through the MPC online giving link that you'll see in your bulletin uh, that you can find online. Uh, you can make a donation through the basket, um, and you'll be able to give both to our mission partners and uh, to the congregation congregational giving. So uh, that's all the announcements I want to make today. I'm going to invite you to stand as we worship God and Mr. Kojo will lead us in the call to worship. Children, your God is calling. Children, your God is calling. Children, your God is calling.
Please be seated. Friends, let us confess before God, before one another. Join me in prayer. Long-suffering God. Long-suffering God, forgive us for continually missing the mark. We look for you in beauty, grandeur, and bluster, but miss the humble, quiet ways you choose to make yourself known. We strive for status and success and fail to see how you might use us. We wish to be popular, forgetting that you have called us to love the unlovable and make our home as you have, with the forgotten, the despised, the voiceless. Forgive us and restore us again to your grace. Amen. Let us stand and receive the assurance of God's grace. Here at the baptismal font of God's promises for us, we remember that the Lord is quick to forgive and eager to grant second chances. Take comfort that God is merciful and never failing in compassion. You are forgiven. Proclaim it, rejoice in it, and live it for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Join me in prayer. God who calls us, your call comes often when we do not expect it. Incline our ears to hear what you are saying and grant us courage to do what you ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know till the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. 
And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision and said, But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and also more, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel from Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Can I invite the children to join me up front that want to bring your joyful noise offerings? You sure may. Come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, did you hear Kojo read this Bible story? Did you? Well, he told me he practiced it like 20 times, so you've probably heard it a couple times. <laughs> All right. Well, so in this Bible story, Samuel is a, is a kid. And Samuel lives at the temple. So he uh, is, Eli is the other person you hear in the story. Eli's the priest, and Samuel's like his right-hand man, right? So, uh, but Samuel is a young kid, and he, he hears somebody calling for him, so he thinks it's Eli, and he keeps showing up and saying, Eli, what's up, dude? What do you need? But it's not Eli. It turns out it's God. God is trying to talk to Samuel. Did you know that God tries to talk to kids? You did? All right. Well, how, how do you go about listening for God? Because actually, I think the adults need some advice. When you pray, you're, you're listening for God. How else do you listen for God? Yeah, when you, yeah. So, so prayer is a big part of it. So, sometimes in our prayers, we we talk to God. We tell God, "Thank you for for a meal, for a good day, for anything else that's going on in our lives." We maybe we ask God for something. If something's going on at school, maybe we ask God to help us at school, right? So 
at what point when you're praying do you listen for God to talk back to you? Because it sounds like prayer is a lot of us talking to God. So how do you listen to God in your prayers? think yeah and so so at some point you gotta stop talking right that's what you were about to say so at some point you gotta stop talking and take a deep breath I don't know about you but when I stop talking then my mind starts going crazy I start thinking about all the things I need to do today. I start thinking about, is Dalvin Cook going to play today? Right? And so how, how do you quiet your mind? Do you have any tips about that? Thinking is a way to let it go. What else? Your brain, your brainstorming? Well, we are brainstorming right now. So for me... The way that I stop letting my brain go crazy is I take a deep breath. Can you take a deep breath with me? Hold it. Let it out. And it's just a way for me to say, you know what? I got a lot of things going on in my brain right now. I'm worried about this thing. I need to do that thing. Oh, I can't forget after church. I need to talk to so-and-so. But just for a minute, just to let myself be quiet. And in those little moments where we're quiet, I think those are the moments where God says, Oliver, I'd like to talk to you. Payel, can you hear me? Mike, nothing's more important than me right now. Take a breath. All right? And maybe sometimes we won't hear God talking, but... I think when we give ourselves those moments to be quiet, we practice that, God will will speak up. Because God doesn't usually yell at us. God whispers. All right? So let's try our best to listen for those whispers. Will you pray with me? Dear God, help us to hear your voice. Quiet the voices inside us. Tune our hearts to hear you. Amen. All right. Uh, Are you going to head out to Kinder Church, cool kids? Yeah. All right. Well, I think Miss Paula is ready to roll, and then you all can come back right before the congregational meeting, okay? Awesome.
done choir virtually in the hall. How's this for a beginning? The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. To make matters worse, Eli, the Lord's priest there at Shiloh, is going blind. The priest can't see. And as we listen to the story develop in, in the passage that Kojo read, not only is Eli physically blind, but we, we find out pretty quick that he's developing a kind of spiritual blindness as well. Samuel is a turning point figure. So in scripture, there are, there are individuals who sort of mark time. It's Abraham and Sarah. It's Moses. In the in-between time, between Moses and the kings of Israel are the judges. And maybe you can name one or two of your favorite judges. Anyone? Deborah, Barak. Any others? All right, well, that might be the highlights, I guess. Samson is another one, fan favorite. But so the judges, time comes to an end, and Samuel is this in-between figure. And S older Samuel is, um, is probably best played by like Clint Eastwood in a movie. Because Samuel, as he gets older, is the kind of person that if you meet him, you probably learn right away, like you probably shouldn't make eye contact with him, he probably doesn't like you, and you're not sure that you're going to like him. So that's older Samuel, because older Samuel has seen some things and maybe is a bit weary in his soul. But little boy Samuel, young man Samuel, that we get to meet in these opening chapters of 1 Samuel, that's kind of like uh, Harry Potter meeting Dumbledore, all right? Like, Dumbledore's got all sorts of things to teach him. Harry's got all sorts of things to learn and is not quite jaded uh, by time and history. So we meet Samuel today, bright-eyed, curious, still learning who the Lord is. That's a phrase that comes up a couple of times in that verse, and I think that's significant, that Samuel doesn't yet know the Lord, but he's learning. And Eli is the teacher given to him to help him learn. One more thing here about Samuel. Samuel it's so important that this book, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, there are a lot of other important people that show up in these two books. King David is a pretty important person. David doesn't get his own book. Samuel gets a book that David appears in. That's how important Samuel is. So next Sunday, for instance, you'll hear about Samuel, who's already anointed King Saul, shows up one day at David's house to anoint King David. We find Samuel here at the temple in Shiloh, Eli's right-hand man. As I talked about with the kids, Samuel's name gets called out once, twice, three times. Eli says, 
go back to bed. I didn't call for you. You're just hearing things. You know, you got to stop drinking caffeine this late at night or you're never going to go to sleep right. But then finally, Eli says on this third time, you know what, I'm not calling for you, but maybe God is. And so the next time you hear somebody call for you, you should say, speak, for your servant is listening. So the fourth time comes. That's what Samuel says. And the Lord speaks. Did you hear what the Lord said? Because this is going to be important in just a minute. The Lord said, I'm phasing out your mentor, Eli. Eli has witnessed the corruption of his own children and hasn't done anything about it. And so I am phasing him out. I'm phasing out his family. That's a pretty hard thing for Samuel to have to tell his mentor. But I want to I come back to that. I want to linger in all the noise that we hear every day, that we experience, that we subject ourselves to, all the noise, family noise, neighborhood noise, maybe it's podcast noise or whatever shows up on your phone noise, maybe it's the noise that comes through in the news. There's so much that we hear in a given day, but what but what do we truly hear? And is there any room left in our brains, in our hearts, for God to speak? You know, with with the children I talked about, um, You know, taking that deep breath, saying, speak, Lord. But I think that's probably something we could all stand to do. I know that's something I need to do. You know, it's really easy to get swept up in the to-do lists that we have. Sometimes, even in this church building, I need to find a physically different space to actually pray, to pay attention, to try to listen for God. Maybe you need that as well. I would like to think that one of the reasons that we show up and worship together is to say, I want to listen. Maybe to this guy who jabbers on for 15 or so minutes, but more importantly to God. To put myself in a place and a space where I can take a breath and listen to God. At Adult Ed earlier, uh, someone was sharing that they found it hard being a part of virtual church midway through the pandemic because it was too easy to just keep doing whatever else you had started to do on Sunday morning. And so for this person, being physically present is something that they need to do to show up, to listen. That's great if a person knows that about themselves. As I shared about Samuel putting himself in a position to listen to God, So he puts himself in a place to listen for God. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And the first thing he hears is a hard thing. I think that's another reason why it's hard to listen. Why it's hard to stop all the other noise going going into our head and hearts. Because sometimes God says hard things. And if we're truly listening, I I do believe that God is going to say hard things. 
hard things about how we spend our time, hard things about relationships that we have, where we spend our money, how we use our voices on behalf of others. God says hard things. Another reason that it's hard to stop the noise is because there's something about noise that sort of makes us feel like we're not alone, right? There's something about noise that kind of, the TV's on, it's just in the background. We can't hear our own thoughts, though. In this season in which we live, there's a lot of unsettled, hard things. There's a lot of noise. But maybe the point of right now, this sort of liminal space, this in-between time in which we live, where everything feels like it's up in the air, one of these transition points in history just like Samuel is a transitional figure in the life of Israel. Who are those figures for us now? Who are the people that help us to navigate these in-between times, this liminal space? I think those people are going to be the people who invite us not to rush through. They're going to be the people who say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, and then they sit and they listen. Who are those people for you? Who are the Eli's in your life saying, you need to pay attention to this? You need to listen to this moment. When we have a plan, when we think we have a purpose, it's really easy to not listen. It's put the plan into action. Do the next step. But when things break down, When things fall apart, those are both seasons and opportunities to practice listening, to open ourselves to what God might be saying in this time. I am probably most interested in Eli story. Because after one day of listening, Eli is told by his young apprentice, your days are numbered. Eli, in order to do his work, carry out his plan and purpose, is ultimately to phase himself out. Most of us like to believe that we are the main character in our life story, right? In the autobiography of Mike Goodwin, I would hope that Mike Goodwin would be the main character. But what if I'm Eli? What if you're Eli? And that your life's work is actually not about you and not about me, but about Samuel or that person who comes after you. With my kids, it's easy to tell that story, that my life is hopefully in some way about them becoming the people that they are supposed to be. 
And when they drop the ball, I say, you're ruining my autobiography. Just kidding. But I want to invite you into that idea. What if your life's work is about someone who comes after you? The students that you teach. The person that will have your job someday. people who will sit in the pew you are sitting in. Eli is called to be a mentor is what I think we would call this. And to do that work it will cost him a lot. It will cost a future for his family. It will cost his position and status. But to Eli's credit, he had the courage to hear the hard thing and to do the hard work. I pray that not only we have the courage to listen in this in-between season, But I also pray that we have the courage to hear the hard thing, to do the hard work. Over the last couple of weeks, I'm thinking about May Lee raising her voice to let us know, yes, about the crop walk, but more importantly, some important work that's making a difference in people's lives. In a bit, we're going to hear from Beth about Bread for the World. We're going to hear about how many people have been lifted out of poverty because of some of the programs and government support that have been given in the past year. Those are a lot of times hard and unpopular things to say, hard things to hear, convicting things that call us to act and sometimes on our best days we respond listening to make one last point isn't just about sitting there ears open mindless passive Listening, whether it's to a person who just needs to share, is really an act of faith and trust. And I, I think it's significant that Samuel's name means God listens. So it's faith and trust that God has heard our prayers. Faith and trust in our listening that God's going to say something back. And whether we hear it audibly like Samuel did, whether we experience that burning bush like Moses did, or whether we know in our own gut that God has given us clarity, that God has shaped what comes next for us. In a hard season, it's tempting to throw our hands up in despair. To wait for somebody else to make a way, to make a plan, to do something. The hard thing is holding faith and listening and then acting in that faith and trust. Each of us, each of us is both Eli and Samuel here. But we do this work, we live this life beginning by listening for God's voice.
That's what we're about today. That's what we'll gather again next week. We listen together. We test the, that listening with each other. And we go out into the world and we act confident that God has both spoken and sent us. That is good news for every season. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to invite you as we go to God in prayer to share joys or concerns that we're bringing in the door with us today. Um, just a few that I know of. I, I, I want to celebrate, as we will later in the congregational meeting, about the folks uh, willing to serve in different ways uh, through the call of the nominating committee. Um, as we uh, celebrate our partnership with the Crop Walk and Bread for the World, just that long history. Uh, a number of folks who are um, who have had surgery, who are recovering. Um, that Francis Watkins is here with us today. That uh, Gretchen Whitcomb is continuing to heal after her surgery. Francie is with us. Are there other ways that we can be praying for each other? Sue. Yes. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Well, and Sue is sharing that uh, her daughter-in-law, Rosa Watkins, uh, um, was recently diagnosed with COVID and is quarantining at her mom's house and just a lot of uncertainty in their own family about what, what's to come there, but prayers for her recovery as well. Other ways we can be praying for each other? Kim. Yes. yes. Uh, a good friend of the Goodwins is uh, had an accident recently and will have to have surgery to repair some a tendon in her hand. Yes. Other ways we can pray for each other? 
Let us pray together. Holy God, it is not always easy to listen. It is not easy to recognize your call. And so we pray, God, that you would speak to us in ways that we can understand in this uncertain season. Help us to follow you faithfully in new ways, in old ways, in renewed ways, that we might answer your call. Speak, for your servants are listening. This world in which we live is so slow to hear your message, even one with such a wonderful promise of life and salvation. And we pray, God, that you would use us in ways that would reach the furthest corners of earth to share that good news of your redemption of life with you. As we call to mind Eli's mentorship of Samuel. We remember the mentors that you have put in our own lives, the people who have helped us to become the people that we have become, to serve, to share our gifts, to make a difference in the world. Be, help us be mindful of those who come after us. Let us be good mentors. Help us to show care for our community as we support those still growing in faith, still learning their gifts, still finding their way. Help us, Lord, to have such boldness to hear hard things, to do hard things. God, you are always aware of the fear, the weakness, the anxiety that we carry with us, the crisis the crises of health and, and wellness that we face. And so we pray, God, that for those that we have named recently having surgery, recently hospitalized, going through challenges of all kinds, we pray that you would extend your hand of healing to all. Continue to heal Clint and Francis and Rachel and Gretchen, and Francie. Be with Jackie, and with Steve, and Jess, and Rosa, and all those that have gone unnamed. Thank you, God, for being a listening God, for bringing us so close that we can speak to you and for loving us so much that you hear us when we pray. All these things we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Friends, we have the opportunity now to, to make our offerings to both partner with one another in the mission and ministry of this congregation, uh, but also to our mission partner, uh, Bread for the World. You're going to hear um, uh, an update from Beth Lipinski here in a second. Um, but as you, as you do, as you um, learn a little bit more about what Bread is doing right now, uh, I would invite you to either make your offerings online through the online giving link or to leave them in the basket here in the center of the congregation. Thank you. Thank you for all you did in 2020. For all you did in 2020. Your voice matters. Your advocacy matters. Your financial support matters. Your financial support matters. Your prayers matter. And, and you, you, you make, make a difference. difference. Your advocacy creates the political will to advance our mission that every person has the God-given right to access nutritious food. In 2020, you did it again. At your urging, Congress extended pandemic EBT so that millions of children missing out on school lunch do not also miss out on nutrition. At your urging, Congress increased SNAP food benefits by 15%. Helping millions of families weather the economic fallout of COVID-19. Your advocacy meant that humanitarian food assistance so desperately needed as hunger skyrockets is protected from new rules that would have impacted quantity. And after two years of consistent and faithful advocacy, you helped pass the bipartisan global nutrition resolution. Thank, Thank you, you for caring. caring. Thank you for putting your faith into action. Every time we call on you. We thank you. And we thank God. And thank God for the blessing that you partner with us in the mission to end hunger. May God bless you and keep you safe. As we continue to advocate and build the political will. To end hunger in the years to come. To end hunger in 2021 and in the years to come. Yes, thank you. October 16th has been recognized as World Food Day since 1945 when the UN established the Food and Agriculture Association. That's why the Crop Walk is held by Church World Service to help end hunger in October. And that's why Bread for the World celebrates Bread for the World Sunday in October, the Sunday closest to October 16th. Our mission partner collections in October are for both the Crop Walk and Bread for the World, both working to end hunger. As a Matthew 25 congregation, we are focusing efforts on ending extreme poverty. Does fighting hunger have an impact on ending extreme poverty? Yes, in fact, a lot of impact. For example, the success mentioned in the video, one we sent letters to Congress about, was the passing of the Bipartisan Global Nutrition Resolution last year. That set the stage for the passage of the Bipartisan Global Malnutrition Prevention and Treatment Act by the House Foreign Affairs Committee. If this bill is enacted into law, it will improve the lives of tens of millions of women and children around the world. Protecting the nutrition of women and children during the critical 1,000 days between pregnancy and a child's second birthday makes an enormous difference in the lives of children and in the future of the world. Studies show that every dollar invested in improving nutrition for the world's poorest children returns $16 in benefits because of improved health and increased economic productivity when they grow up. And that helps end extreme poverty. 
if those kids don't get the nutrition they need to develop in health in those critical first 1,000 days, they will not reach their full potential. Look at the memo this week and next to see how to contact Congress by phone or letter to support passage of this critical nutrition bill. Your mission offerings in the next two weeks of the month will help support Bread for the World with its mission. So again, thank you. Let us stand and pray with one voice. We are blessed to be your servants, O oh God. Take all that we offer, these gifts, our time, and our dedication, and use them toward your greatest purpose. Amen. 